I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I'm Mally Moore. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, where a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. Uh, wow. We had, normally we have something there, but. Yeah. No. <laughs> that was pretty you, clean. Wow. Yeah, you got that right. Good work, sir. But you know what? That leaves us, that leaves just like a, a lull in the episode. Like, if we get it right, lull. we if we get it right, it leaves a lull. Um, That's true. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time tuning in, what we like to do is take movies that are sad, weird, fucked up in a way when it's all said and done, and we like to find the silver lining in that ending, something good for the characters or for the audience, something to latch on to uh, that makes you feel a little bit better after being tormented for an hour and a half, uh, like our episode, because we're not good at it. Maybe we should do a meta silver lining on our show. <laughs> like when it's all said and done, maybe that should be our series finale, a podcast finale. Where we just cover our own podcast. We cover our own show. I'm not against it. I'm not <laughs> against it. Um, this week we are looking uh, at a weird one. Um, why did I pick this? I don't know. This is stupid. Because I have questions for you. Oh God. <laughs> regarding this choice, but uh, as you can tell by the title, it is 2007's Funny Games. Not to be confused with the film from 1997 of the same name, same, uh, same director. director, same story, uh, but we'll get into that. So, Mally, this was your pick. Can you tell me why you chose Funny Games? Because it's fucked up, man. Um, no, so I, God, the fir- I, the first time I saw this movie, uh, one of my friends, like, showed it to me. I was like, dude, you gotta watch this, it's fucking crazy. And, like, I was like, oh, fucking, the cast is great. Tim yeah. Roth, Naomi Watts, Michael Pitt. Um, and I think this was... I think the reason he showed this to me because we had we just started watching Boardwalk Empire. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, oh. And I was like, oh, like did, that dude plays Jimmy's rad. And he was like, oh, dude, you got to see this other movie he was in. I was like, okay. Showed me this. And so I was... Like, we were eating dinner. Like, I made... I think I was eating, like, chicken. And literally, at some point in this movie, I literally push my plate away because I thought I was going to vomit because of what happens within this story of this film. You had a pretty visceral reaction then. I don't think I nearly got to that level. (laughs) Dude, this is the only, like, all right, this, there's two movies that I've seen once and adamantly refuse to ever watch again, and I have watched both of them the second time for this podcast, (laughs) Buried and This. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I'm really making you, like relive some of your worst well moments. i mean the all right buried was completely your fault i brought this <laughs> on myself dude i like i was like you know it'll be better this time it, it was better but i was like i couldn't watch this in one sitting like mm. i just split it up because like i'm trying to have a good like because i'm still oh yeah we forgot to mention we're actually in the same room for the second week yeah in row. yeah we are <laughs> um I'm, I'm still hanging out here in la um but i was like you know i'm trying to enjoy my time in Los Angeles, and I was like, if I watch this, if this I show. <laughs> watch this movie right now, like if I finish this movie right now, I'm gonna have a bad day. So I split it up. I finished it the next day, and that that day sucked, to be honest. Yeah, um, that was also the uh, I finished this actually yesterday morning, where it was 114 degrees in Los Angeles. Yeah, we should mention it's been hot. Uh, for us here on the West Coast. It has been toasty. I miss that nice 80 degree, 90% <laughs> humidity Atlanta weather right now. And I yeah. never thought I'd say that. Um, thankfully, we have AC in this room. So, Thank uh, God. And water. We do. Um, so this movie was on my list. I thought I had seen it, but maybe it was just in the blur of films that I saw in my like late teens early 20s of just plowing through everything i could this movie was definitely on my list because it was on many uh most fucked up movie list mm-hmm. kind of, along with you know the solos and the uh the what? solos or 120 days of summer it's a foreign film uh okay yeah that maybe future I'm assuming episode number one was a serbian film yeah i've seen that and it's a garbage movie oh it's bad. um Wait, what, dude, was Martyrs on there? Martyrs was on there. Martyrs is and that's, great. That's for sure a future episode. Oh, yeah, no, we can definitely um, do Martyrs anytime. But Funny Games was on that list, uh, this one and the original, and I thought I had seen it, but upon this watch for this episode, I it turns out I had not. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised for about 
10 to 15 percent of the movie uh everything else i was kind of like just blase uh so i'm sorry to disappoint also, you we had very different reactions to this movie. yeah i've i've got notes for sure um but before we get into that let's talk about some backstory so again the, the movie is funny games from 2007 uh, director is Michael Haneke, I think is how you pronounce it. No idea. Okay. Well, he also, for those who are curious, he did direct a uh, non-English speaking version of this film back in 1997. Uh, it's pretty much the same exact movie, shot for shot. There's a few key differences. Dude, even um, like the house is almost the same. Yeah, the proportions of the house are were built pretty much replicating the original. That's nuts. Uh, starring... Naomi Watts, Tim Roth, Michael Pitt, Bradley Corbett, and Devin Gearhart. Which it took me forever to figure out what I knew uh, Bradley what's his name Corbett. Bra- Corbett from. He's like he's been one of those dudes that just pops up around. Like he's the dude that hits on Kirsten Dunst and Melancholia and some other movie. Well, it's funny because Michael Pitt got brought up last episode because he is one of the escorts for bryce dallas howard in the village <laughs> which i didn't realize until i didn't think about that i re-listened to the village episode so um yeah it's, it's a weird connection there uh had a budget of 15 million grossed only 8 million worldwide and right now sits at 51 percent on rotten tomatoes that's fair to be honest see is my, even though i didn't really care about this movie i do feel like it's a little low there are some good things in this movie. I think it could be. I think it could live in the sixties, probably. Sixties, I'd be fine with. Even maybe low seventies, I'd be okay. Oh wow, okay. But I don't know. Uh, shall we jump into the trailer? Yeah. Sorry to disturb you. I'm staying next door. Please, come in. Wow, that's a really great set of clubs. Mr. Farber. What? Ah! Yeah! You want to call someone? An ambulance? Or, or the police? Why are you doing this? Have a seat. Please. I'm Paul. We're going to make a bet now. You bet that you'll be alive tomorrow at 9 o'clock, and we bet that you'll be dead. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch the tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> Why don't you just kill us? You shouldn't forget the importance of entertainment. have done that, Anne. <laughs> Keep me safe all through the night. Please. <laughs> That's awesome, really. Really. Um, okay. Thoughts on this trailer. Dustin. Oh <laughs> yeah, um, you're going first. Uh, I don't. I, I like this trailer, but I don't think it really lived up to the tone of the, of the end result. Um, but yeah, the trailer doesn't really show you how the, the ride you're in for. Yeah, it makes it seem like more like a black comedy, which this movie is not. Um, no, this movie's not funny. No, which not is at all. ironic considering the name. But it does have some cool rhythmic editing to it with that uh that classical song that I can't think of the name of. Yeah. Um again, that I think I did like the use of that song in the trailer. I don't I didn't see the trailer for the original, so I don't know how it compares, but it was me neither. It's interesting, I guess. Uh okay. So let's get into the movie. <clears throat> you have questions, don't you? I I don't want to spend 
uh, an hour just shit talking this movie because <laughs> th- I I had a bold to pick with you that I brought up with you a few days ago. Oh, Jesus, that was unintentional on your part apparently, but I thought was intentional. But this movie is basically knock knock <laughs> again. Thank God. <laughs> But, Thank God. So I don't want to shit talk this movie for an hour because I feel Slightly like I did that. Slightly less threesomes. I did, yeah. I did that with Knock Knock, but I feel like we've already done this yeah, movie. Yeah, and you were wrong the entire <laughs> t- You were so wrong. I feel like we've already covered this movie. So I don't really want to get into the... Uh... Okay, so the reason Knock Knock is the best film of all time... Oh, good. It... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I think I'm just... I'm just over this over type of invasion movie. films yeah because we've done the strangers we've done knock knock Which, we've done this the biggest takeaway was on our rewatch of the strangers was this movie is fucking boring yeah the strangers was real boring like i remember loving that movie same and then, here yeah, on that rewatch I was like oh yeah like it's not as nearly as exciting when you know what's gonna happen yeah which I think that's what made there's the not a whole so exciting there's not a whole lot of also, rewatchability on the did strangers you see the sequel no, I have it at home. I have a copy, but I haven't seen um, it. I saw it. That was actually the first movie I saw after I moved from Florida to Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, it was bad. It was bad. Not great. I expected um, I about the same. I kept making jokes about how they should change the title to Snap Zoom the movie. Because <laughs> every shot, dude, it was just like wide into a close-up. Weird. Yeah, very strange camera work. But um, also a horrible movie. Yeah, I feel like The Strangers is boring. Knock Knock is Amazing essentially, essentially a B movie. On every level. And this uh, one this one felt a little... B movie. Yeah. <laughs> this one felt a little up its own ass at times. Um, but in those moments, I kind of liked it more. Okay. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's just kind of start from the beginning. Uh, I think the jump scare title is amazing. But oh. we've also already seen it with the cabin in the woods the past episode. Song. Yeah, that song. Yeah, hey, no, this did it before though. <clears throat> this yeah. came out before cabin in the woods, which I'm sure you know Joss Whedon and them. T- Absolutely, yeah, yeah, definitely got. Like, no, that by. was one of my first things when I watched cabin in the woods. I was like, this that, is funny. That games. was funny games. <laughs> um, I feel like they just the, the reason I don't really care for this movie that much is I feel like it hits the check marks for what you expect in a movie like this. Like, as soon as I saw the dog, I was like, well, that's he's dead. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Well, I'm I, the only thing I wanted to say about that is I'm kind of over killing dogs for shock value in movies. Same! It's, Can we stop killing the dogs? It's just... God, kill a cat or it's, something. Yeah, it's not clever. I'm fine and, with that. I don't like cats. You know, as, dogs much, are cool. as much as I like dogs, I don't want to see any injured on film. Same. The only movie that's done it good for me is Terminator 2 because it kind of directly tied in... To the plot, That's it wasn't. Point. It wasn't point. just shock value. How do, wait, okay, wait. I do want to ask you this. So, mm-hmm. uh, assuming anyone listening to this has watched the movie, if not, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> um, so Michael Pitt's character, um, he's Paul, Paul, right? And the other one's Peter. He breaks the fourth wall a lot of times. Constantly, I wanted to bring that up. Talks to the audience, speaks yeah. to the audience, looks yeah. at the camera. How do you feel? Does that work for you in the movie? That's one of the, that I can tell you right now. That is one of the things that upsets me the most. That's like that makes me feel upset, is that there is not a single moment where I feel hope for the family because I like because Michael Pitt's character is literally God. Yeah, like he is in control the entire time. Well, the fourth wall breaks. I don't mind so much, but what I do mind, and this is pretty much near the ending, is the remote control. I I don't like it. Stood up and screamed at the TV when that happened. <laughs> Out of anger, right? Like, he literally, like, because she gets away, picks up a shotgun, shoots Peter. <clears throat> mm-hmm. He gets mad, grabs a remote, rewinds it, and then yells at her that she's not allowed to break the rules. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Like, that's the moment where I just gave up. I was like, are you fucking, like, there is no way this has a happy ending. I don't like that... It's introduced 10 minutes before the movie ends. I don't like that it's a plot-breaking, world-breaking device that is just thrown in as like a... It's it's like you get to see... It's a really cheap effect to me. It's like... It's almost like an alternate... The ending we got is almost like an alternate ending to me. Yeah. And I don't I don't care for it the way they do it that way. It, it just feels... 
so contrived and like student filmy. Like I get that effect. Like this would be where a student filmmaker would start. They would be like, okay, so I'm gonna do this now. Let me retroactively go back and do all this these other things in this okay. movie. And I just I don't know. I feel like we don't need it. I, I really don't need. See, I, I the think- fourth wall breaks establishes what they're trying to do with that remote control in that. Like you said, he's in control the whole, the whole time. He's God, right? Or he's God of the situation. We don't need a, rem- a physical plot device to do that. Yeah, I think the first time I saw this, I was so infuriated by what was happening. Like, just like, that's not fair that it didn't bother me. I will say the second time, I do see where you're coming from. Because it does kind of, like, he breaks the fourth wall, but nothing that drastic. Yeah. And then, yeah, it does come a little bit out of nowhere. Yeah, the fourth wall breaks are mostly just kind of like to poke you and, like, irritate you more. And yeah. It's it's not Frank Underwood and, and uh, House of Cards. It's not like he's giving out exposition or, like, building the character. He's just kind of being like, hey, you still yeah. with us kind of thing? Yeah, like little, like, nudges and winks. He might as well just... tap on the glass and ask if you're still awake. <laughs> like, um, So, yeah, I want to talk about the good things I like in this movie before I – Get into the bad Spend just because I forty five minutes trashing it. Just because I yeah I feel like it's only fair. Um, I think the little kid is the star of this movie. He's I, really good. He is carrying a lot of weight on his shoulders. This Dude, movie. apparently, uh, Tim Roth because Tim Ross never watched this movie. Yeah, he said he, he said won't it watch was it. brutal. Yeah, but apparently, it has to do with because the child actor looks so much like his actual son. Like, man, that was probably traumatizing. I can yeah. imagine that's crazy. I think the. Uh, he is really the uh, what's this kid's name? Uh, I'm In the guessing. Movie, it's I'm guessing Devin Gearhart. Uh, I think so. Um, no. no, he is really good in this. Like the tension uh, of the scene where he's in the neighbor's house running from uh, from Paul. Yeah, it reminds me of Danny from The Shining, where like he sees his footprints. He's got to cover his tracks. You love The Shining. Yeah, my favorite movie. I could see that though. Yeah, that. I wonder if that was intentional. Probably because the kid is a lot. Like, for the most part, he's kind of dumb in the movie in the sense that, like, he doesn't really grasp the gravity of the situation, I don't think. Like, right. he's, like, you know, screaming mommy and trying to fight the guy barefisted. He's very, um, like, straight emotion, not he's thinking. He's a kid. Yeah, exactly. And then in that moment, I feel like he grows up and he is, like, he's like, he's at least smart to a point. Uh, of course, that scene is then ruined by the... Them, I don't like that they play the same song twice, and that he puts music. Paul, uh, Paul puts this this song on from the opening credits. Oh uh, yeah, and then yeah. it's like, even from a non meta sense, when wouldn't it be obvious that that gun is empty? Like the kid, the gun that the guy, the kid finds, because there's two dead bodies in the house. It's a double barrel shotgun. Like, it's a kid though. I don't know, man. I. I the kid also, at one point when he's trying to escape and he tries to hop over the fence, he totally could have made it over that fence. He like stops halfway. Okay, I'm gonna give you that one. I'll give you that um, one, son of a bitch. Yeah, I feel like I feel like he's good and like it, just his performance is really great. Or the the editor is the fucking star here. I can't tell, but I feel like that kid is great. Um, yeah, I, that's. I I thought and that's the only thing you like. No, no, no. I was gonna say I think. <coughs> <clears throat> the reveal of his death is fucking... Oh. Yeah, it's the best part of the movie to me. Wait, let me ask. Did Priscilla watch this with you? No, she did okay. not. that's probably uh, a good thing. I don't think she would have cared about a kid dying in a movie like this because the kid was probably like, what, like seven or eight, maybe even older? Dude, I don't know. All right, just for a little backstory, on the drive here, she covered oh, yeah. her ears while we were, me and you were discussing locking children in cars and leaving them there. Yeah. And she covered well, her ears, so I can only imagine <laughs> not not locking the kids in and leaving them there, forgetting they're in the car. That, not, yes, that, yeah. that, that, that we're not that, not torturing. Kids. Yes, okay, my mistake. Um, forgive me, I don't have kids, so I don't know yeah. what the proper phrasing yeah, 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 yeah. is on that. Uh, I um, think, but the reveal of his death is great. the The long uh, shot of the TV with the blood on it, with the action in the background, uh, that oneer of Naomi Watts sitting like in the the uh, the middle of the living room and the dead body off to the side. Mm-hmm. It's it's the best scene in the movie to me. Dude, Naomi Watts is great in this too. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I don't love Tim Roth in it. Not gonna lie. Yeah, he kind of he's kind of sleepy in the movie. He doesn't have a lot to do, to be honest. I was gonna ask you first before we get off that scene. Do you do you know how long that winner is? Because I timed it. 
No. It's pretty long. Do uh, you have a guess? I'm trying to think. Because I feel like it feels longer than it actually is. For me, it's the I'm opposite. I feel like it's not 45 as... 45 seconds? The winner? No, 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 no. It's the Wait, one, we... the winner where she is tied up. Right after they shoot Georgie and they leave, she turns the TV off. She escapes. She goes back and helps. Oh, that. Okay. No. It's nine and a half minutes long. Holy shit. Yeah. Because uh, I timed it. I, was, it was, I felt like it was going on forever, and I was like, this is fine. I like that I'm in this moment with, uh, in this scene. But, again, for the things that I did like about that, there are parts that I didn't like. Um, Such as? Is it just me, or are Naomi Watts and Tim Roth's characters, are their reactions to their son's death kind of like, nigh absent i will give you that one that did bother me on this rewatch like, they i don't want to like they react but like like i know people people grieve in different ways and maybe that's what the director was going for but it felt like it was just man you really need to i was about to make a comparison <laughs> to a newer film that you haven't seen mm. but i can't because you haven't seen it <laughs> uh I just feel like if if I watch my son get blasted away in front of me with a shotgun, I would be just a just an absolute force of raw emotion that like I, you wouldn't be able to pick me up off the ground. I mean, it again, people grieve in different ways. It they could literally just be in shock. Yeah, but I don't know, man. Because they never they have like a brief moment in the kitchen when. Uh, Nami Watts is going to leave, and Tim Ross is going to stay and try to use the cell phone where they kind of grieve together, but I don't know. Uh, I thought there was something I weird going say, on bold there. bold move that of the three of them, the first to die is the kid. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to me. Um, like, I can't think of another movie that does that. I think the color palette of the film is an interesting choice to be very diluted, and there's little to no saturated colors. Very sterile. It's very... It, it kind of gives you, like... The, the the ending of the movie where he's it's kind of like the sun's rising and you got that like morning fog yeah. over the lake that's kind of what the movie feels like it feels like there's a fog over everything yeah um th- for some reason the wardrobe of Peter and Paul makes me so uncomfortable yeah the all white the all white um well except for Peter he's wearing black shorts which mm-hmm. bothered me yeah um. Yeah, just like the white polos, like the white gloves. The golf clubs is a good idea because, you know, it keeps them from fingerprints and everything. Um, I And they're just generally creepy looking. I also realize this movie essentially has no score. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a great choice. This is the kind of movie that deserves to not have a score since you're supposed to be in it with them. Which, again, I think adds to the uncomfortable, unsettling factor. for sure. No, this movie's got some creepy moments. Not a lot of movies do that. Yeah. Especially horror movies. This movie's got a lot of creepy moments, especially... Like, even... Uh, did you see A Quiet Place? Yeah, you saw A Quiet I Place. I saw A Quiet Place. There's a score. Like, it's a very quiet film, but there is score to it. And I mean, I think I may, maybe even mentioned that I wanted to see a version of that movie without the score. Oh, and absolutely. I, and That'd I be, thought it'd be great. I like, a silent... see that. Even without the dialogue, I think it would be great to have a silent ver- film version of that movie. Yeah. Um, I, I Something else that's good that's creepy in this movie, I think, is... I don't understand why it's not more iconic. The uh, golf ball rolling into the door frame uh, hmm. near the end of the movie after Tim Roth is left alone and he thinks the the boys are gone. I thought it was one of the coolest and creepiest things I've seen in a right? horror movie in a long time. That's a good one. Uh, I don't know. As soon as you hear it bounce on the floor, it's like, oh, that's the fucking golf ball. And then they show it and it's like so fucking creepy. Uh-huh. Um, it's so great. Like I said, there's good, good, a lot of good stuff in this movie, um, but also a lot of stuff you hate. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of like oh, one one other thing I wanted to mention that I do like. I do like. This is gonna sound weird, but I do like all the deaths in this movie. I like that there's not really uh, on screen ultra violence. It's more implied. Like, we don't really see anyone die except for Peter. Um, True. It it really works when there's more to the imagination there, and it's more horrifying not seeing the kid get blown away and not seeing 
Tim Roth get blown away or watching Naomi Watts drown, stuff like that. Um, so I do enjoy that. I appreciated the director for sparing us from having to see a kid get blasted in the face. And I also like the reveal of the dog's death. I think it's like as much as I don't care for watching animals get killed on screen for shock value, I like how they revealed it with the dog just kind of like gradually plummeting out of the back of that vehicle. Right. It's a good good reveal. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I'll say, like, it, even though I knew it was coming, when they first kind of attack with the golf club, still kind of made me jump a little bit. Mm-hmm. Cause I was like, oh yeah, this. Oh god, it's okay. a slow. It's yeah. a kind of a slow oh, burn wow. up top. Um, cause like before that, it's just all the shit with the eggs, which just annoys me. Yeah. <laughs> um. Plus, I wa- every both like well this time when I watch well actually the first time too, but I was hungry both times. <laughs> that I've seen this movie and like watching eggs just get destroyed. I was like, oh, this could be delicious. Um. I feel. Do, what do you think Paul and Peter are like when they're not doing this? I think they're exactly like this. Yeah. I don't think they well, turn off. Like, Paul makes fun of Peter. Like, you must kind of feel bad for Peter a few times. Yeah. Because Paul just kind of makes fun of him the whole movie. Yeah, which was, you know, that was something I put in here, too. I was expecting, you know, the movie like that where you have, like, two villains and one's kind of picking on one the whole time. Mm-hmm. You expect them to turn at some point, right? Like, yeah. that's what I was waiting for in this movie. I was Same. waiting for the turn. Doesn't happen. Yeah, it never came. Peter, um, like, ridicule, make fun of his weight all you want. The dude's ride or die. Mm-hmm. Um, so now let's talk, unless you got more good, I kind of want to talk about the bad. Let's go. <clears throat> um. What you got? I don't, I, I don't really believe the stakes in this movie. What do you mean? I don't, I don't buy into that these kids are in control. I, I think, well, well one, one question I have, I also wanted to get into a section of just questions I have, but right. would a golf club really break someone's leg on one try? And it didn't seem like it even hit them that hard. I mean, it could, I mean, depending on the material, because a lot of golf clubs are, you know, titanium hmm. or some kind of metal. Know. That's, and that's it, I mean, swing. Depending... Okay, I will give you that. It doesn't look like he swings it hard enough, but yeah. I mean, I'm willing to suspend disbelief on that. Okay. I don't know. I just... Tim he's Roth wearing, takes a backseat in this whole movie. Does he kneecap him? Well, when they show him later, they show, like, the blood pulling up around uh, his wound. It's kind of, like, right below the knee. So I'm thinking, like, on the, like, above the shin. Like I mean, I think, dude, like, I I believe it. I okay. believe it. I don't know. I feel like Tim Roth just kind of takes a backseat. You want to grab seat. a golf club yeah. and test it out? <laughs> and I'm swinging. I don't know. There's plenty of moments where these, these kids cannot be in control. I mean, Naomi Watts... Just felt like the typical damn, not even damsel in distress, because she doesn't really have a moment of triumph in this movie. She does when she kills Peter, but then that's immediately taken away from immediately. her. Immediately, this movie's not a good sheds a good light on f- female victims in horror movies. <laughs> I will say that she is immediately like, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like she's well, she de- derobes. In the yeah. movie, and it's like treated as nothing. Um, she is like she gets away only to immediately be brought back. Yep. Um, they kind of they, they kind of just play her off as really dumb and naive, and I I don't know. It may like I said that's why I don't buy I don't buy that someone would be this. These these kids could be this in control of this entire neighborhood. I don't know. Um, no, I mean, it's in very heavily implied. I mean, they done this before yeah no no they got it it down to a science almost at this point i think yeah uh oh yeah something else i wanted to mention that was that i did like um i thought the blocking in this movie was really really brilliant and i think if it's something you notice it's good like um i don't remember what the line is but it's right before the the clubbing uh tim Tim roth is middle of the frame and he's got the back to the audience he's looking at paul and peter and one's on each side of them yeah and they're kind of just speaking to him, and he's like, "Well, what, what do you guys want?" And it's like perfect because he's like, "Well, you're in the middle of them. You like, yep. no matter which way you look, you're gonna see one." Uh huh. And stuff like that. It's brilliant. Um, it's not a bad looking movie by any means. No, no, it's it's filmed adequately. I mean, he had the chance to to do it the first time, so <laughs> that is true. Yeah, um, it is damn near shot for shot. Also, I don't really find this movie that scary. 
I don't think it's supposed to be scary. I don't think it's a horror movie. See, I would argue that it's supposed to be a horror movie because I think the idea of these people coming into your home is supposed to be what is... Whereas, I wouldn't call Not Knock a horror movie and it's the same kind of concept. This no, one... you just call it really fucking good. Yeah, I would call this one... It's supposed to be a horror movie, I think. Um, and I, I find it... See, I would classify it more as like a thriller than a horror movie. Okay. Well, horror and thriller like, kind of share. No, no, I'd say suspenseful, not thriller. Okay. Suspenseful. Um, yeah, I, I find it more annoying than anything. Maybe it's uh, just... Of course. That was going to be one of my... Dude, like, you picked The Village <laughs> last week. Shut up. Um, I, I Maybe it's just my, my cynicism in my older age, but like home invasion movies like this or like villains of this type, I don't find scary or intimidating. I find them just annoying. Um... Especially like, and never it's never implied why they do this. It's it seems like it's just because they, they do it for fun, kind of yeah. like the strangers. I don't. I just feel like that's lazy. Um. So yeah, I, I I like I said, I don't find it scary. I really don't really find it intimidating. It's just mostly annoying to me, and that's kind of why I didn't really enjoy the movie. I was just like, well, dude, you, it, wait, why? It's kind of like why I never got into Hostel. It's mm-hmm. like, dude, I don't really care to just see people being tortured the whole, for an hour and a half. It's yeah. fucking boring. See, yeah, I don't like. I think. If you like, because this movie is definitely dated for sure. Like I noticed that a lot of my rewatch. Um, but again, I saw this like this was because this came out what two thousand seven. Yeah. So I saw it shortly after that, probably like within the year of it coming out. And I don't know. It felt a lot more fresh then. And I think like even on my rewatch, I still enjoyed it. But I might have been just nostalgic. No. Yeah. Even though I never wanted to watch this again. Um, so I, th- cause this was your first time seeing it, wasn't it? Yeah. Was watching it for this. Yeah. So yeah, I think cause it's been, yeah, over 10 years since this movie came out. Yeah. I'm like, wow, I didn't realize how old this movie was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it, I don't know, I mean, it hasn't aged quite as well as I remember it being probably. So like, I feel like, cause that's the big thing. I think difference between me and you is I did see a lot of movies back in the day in theaters you a lot of films you didn't see until the past few years. Yep. So I think that's why our opinions differ so much. <laughs> Although Knock Knock had not seen it until this podcast, and thank God that I saw that movie. <laughs> um, this is great. Mally, do you want to uh, do you want to bet? Yes, absolutely. Okay, because I a bet, bet it's not a bet. It's a bet that I it's, bet. It's a, yeah, it's a bet, but it's not. a it's a bet. Okay. Not that bet. Copy. It's a bet that if the listeners go right now to reddit.com slash r slash silver learnings playlist and find the official discussion thread for funny games and leave the contest code I'm about to give as a comment there, they can win some free stuff and you'll bet that it doesn't matter. You can't win anything. Oh, I'm going to lose. Yep. Or no, well, I'm going to. You, you, I'm, I'm, they're gonna either win. way. They're going to win, but I'm going to lose. Whoever wins, we lose. It's, yeah, that sounds about right. It's AVP. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Possible episode for the show? God, can we not? Um. So, yeah. If you're listening to us right now and you want to win some free stuff, just go to reddit.com slash r slash Silverlines playlist. Find Funny Games' as official discussion thread and leave this contest code as a comment for a chance to win some free stuff. All of this for a carton of eggs. Which... I feel like it's good life advice as well. Yeah, probably. Everything you do is but probably remember, for uh, life advice. you have to follow the rules. you got to follow the rules, and those rules being go right now and do that uh, on the official discussion thread for Funny Games. We'll randomly select a winner uh, and get in touch with you. Yup. So get get to it. Eggs. <sighs> I lost my train of thought. Oh, you know what movie does kind of this idea well? Um, knock, knock. <laughs> I was going to say you're next. Oh, that, see, your next is a completely different movie to me. It's not a home invasion movie, not but it is some uh, a female surviving in a home with invaders uh, that t- that puts a twist on it. Like she's still trapped in see, the house. Now with these your people. next is a black comedy. Yes, I don't. I would say it's a black comedy, know, man. black comedy horror movie. Um. I don't know, like I said, I'm, maybe it's just my old age. I'm kind of over home invasion movies where there's no, there's no character development, there's no arc, there's no, like, there's no way for the character to have. I mean, obviously, if we're doing it on this show, it's going to end badly. But True. There's just there's no way for anything 
Why? Well, that's why. That's why we're doing this. What no. we're gonna we're gonna eventually get to the point of finding some good in this. <laughs> Um, Probably not, though, let's be honest. Yeah, I don't really have too much here. There are some cool little details in this movie that I liked. Um, like, for instance, when whenever uh, Peter kind of bumps into Naomi Watts and drops her cell phone in the sink. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's a brilliant way for them to get the cell phone out of the picture. And then uh, I kept questioning. I was like, well, where's Tim Roth's cell phone? The whole time. And then that finally was addressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few minutes after I was thinking it, and they're like, "Well, it's in the car," and I guess the car was. Did they take the car right? Was that the idea? Yeah. I also like that Naomi Watts is smart to hide behind the tree the first time she sees a car going up and down the street, uh, and then when she realizes it's not uh, her car or a car that the kids would drive, that she jumps out behind and mm-hmm. tries to flag it down, only for that to immediately be taken away from her the second car that drives. It's kind of a slap in the face. A <laughs> little bit. A little bit. Um, did you notice this weird bit of editing, uh, during the quote unquote alternate ending for this movie where, uh, Naomi Watts grabs a gun, shoots Peter. And after Peter has already been shot and blown up against the wall that Paul screams out, look out. <laughs> did you happen to notice this? Cause I did. Yes. It's a weird bit of editing. One point in the movie. Where I laugh. It's it's it was like, well, that's weird. <laughs> um, I don't think there's a reason behind it. I thought it was just a bit of weird editing. Well, I think it. I think it. I think. I mean, it was obviously cut like that on purpose. You think it's because he's in control anyway, so it doesn't matter. That and I think it ties into the his whole relationship with Peter. Oh, because he's always ridiculing him. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't. And plus, you know, I don't really think he cares what happens to Peter. Because he knows he's in control. Yeah. Maybe that's but why that, he picks on him, because it doesn't matter. Everything. Yeah. Well, that makes everything in this movie ultimately pointless to me. It's like... I think that... Yeah. <sighs> um, Michael Pitt is going to get his way. Yeah. No matter what happens. See, Michael I, Pitt I wish they way. would have established that in a better way than introducing that remote in the last two minutes. The fourth wall breaks are a good kind of lead up to it, but there needs to be more, I think. Like, uh, maybe... Naomi Watts puts her cell phone down, comes back, and it's gone. It's like, oh, well, he he took it or something like See, that. See, I think a cool way to maybe – because I do agree that should have been built up anymore. Maybe have him pick up the remote earlier on and just kind of like, you know, well, maybe he just Maybe he just it, walks like around – with him. Yeah, maybe he just walks around with a remote in his back pocket yeah, and it's exactly. just weird. Like – when he first gets into the house, you know, the first thing he does, he grabs the remote, puts it in his pocket. Yeah. That would have been enough setup for it, I think. So is it, do you think it's all any TV remote, like the remotes on any of these houses he goes to? Or is it just like he can pick anything and use it as uh, a rewind button? I mean, I think as long as something is there with a rewind button. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't know the magic behind his superpowers, man. <laughs> Um, so do you have anything else you want to address before we get into the ending? Um, not really, to be honest with you. Okay. Do you want to set up what the ending is? Oh God. (laughs) So after, you know, Peter's brought back to life, um, like, I'm not going to get too detailed with it, because, again, yeah. if they're listening, they've seen the movie. Yeah. Um, so they killed, like, you know, Georgie's dead. Peter's brought back to life. They kill George. They go out on this little boat. They have Naomi Watts tied up. Mm-hmm. And just, on the middle of this, like, very casually throw her overboard. Yeah, before they do that, though, they she has the knife that she gave Tim Roth mm. earlier in the movie. And I thought I was going to come back in a way, but it's, again, they... There's no, no one's smart in this movie. Like, she tries to cut herself free while she's sitting in front of them. Just seemed like, one, a dumb idea, and two, like, if that's the idea, keep that knife hidden for a greater opportunity to present itself. And it, like, if that was me, I would have kept the knife knowing they were going to throw me overboard, and then when I'm underwater, use it to Do cut you think myself. you could have done that? I think she had better chances of doing that than, like, hey, let me, like, they're three feet away from her, and she's on her back... In front of them, cutting the tape off. Yeah. Or trying to nick them as you're going down. Something. Um, it just felt like really dumb decisions. Anyway. 
They kick her overboard mm-hmm. and go to what's the neighbor's name? They sail across the lake to I don't know the neighbor's name, but they go to the woman they seen earlier in the movie. And uh, what does he ask for? He doesn't ask for eggs again, does he? Yeah, he asks does for eggs, eggs again. Eggs. Eggs. And then okay. he just kind of looks at the camera. And then the title comes up again. Yep. So yeah, they they get away with killing everybody, or they do kill everybody and move on to the next victim. Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen the Dark. original film? Uh, bits and pieces. I've never sat through the whole thing. Okay. So you don't know really how it differs. I know one way it differs, but it's not really that. Like, I pretty much just seen, like, almost like the comparison videos yeah. and comparison, like, ar- articles and that kind of okay. thing. Okay. Yeah, the only thing I saw that was different really is that Nomi Watts' character derobes earlier in the movie rather than later. Um, she derobes earlier in the American version? In the American version. I think they, they hold on. It's a weird change. Yeah. Which, I'm glad they don't show any nudity in this movie. It, it seems like it would be pointless. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I do like that. Well, was there a reason for that change? I think that she said it would, like, rob her more of her agency earlier on and, like, really set the tone. Which is, I get. I get it. Huh. Um, I don't think that scene even needs to exist, really. Uh, it's yeah, it's another, it's it's another thing. Scene. It's, like, weird... Sexual abuse in horror movies, too, is kind of, like, in bad taste now for me. Like, killing dogs for shock value and humiliating women, I don't know. It's, it, I, it would the, be, those are your two things I would have been gone in horror I, movies? I don't necessarily want to see them gone. I want them to be done smarter and with more care. Like, yeah. the fact that she does that, I feel like there should have been some reverse. I, mean, I will say, we've been in a much better, like, because there for a while we were in a very bad period of horror films. Oh, oh yeah. But the past few years we've been getting, like, I mean. More conscientious. Get Out, yeah. Quiet Place, um, that new, um, the new Halloween film looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hereditary was great. You haven't seen it. Can't comment. You son of a bitch. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I just want my protagonist to get have at least a moment of getting the leg up, and they never do in this movie. They never once, which I get it. It's supposed to be because the villain's in control, but right. if you really want me to be active in your movie and not just passive, which I was in this movie, I was very passive. I there's you got to give me something, something to latch, hitch my wagon to, and there was never a moment where Nami Nam- Watts was in control, um, and it's just I don't know. It makes the movie boring to me. I'll give you that one. Um, it does. I mean, it definitely qualifies for our show. It is a fucked up ending. Ow. Um, Absolutely it is. Yeah, you, There I, is no yeah. doubt about that. And like I said, I do like the way they treat character deaths in this movie where it's they don't almost glor- second they nature. They don't really glorify them. No, it's almost like, nah, yeah, it's it's like offhanded, and I appreciate that. That's good. Um, so, Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about Silver Linings, or is there anything else you want to get into? No, let's do it. Uh, you go first. Before I do, one other note I wanted to mention, uh, just I didn't really have a place for it anywhere, but I thought uh, the kid that plays Peter, I thought him and his unibrow could make a really good Joker, because he's got a really good jawline, and he's got like almost like the pursed lips. Like that are kind of curl up in the corners. I could see it. He's got a really good uh, Joker face. I want to see. Honestly, if we're recasting Joker, give it to Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's what I want to see, dude. See, I was gonna female Joker Aubrey Plaza. Mm-hmm. I'm fucking in. I would especially be especially for anyone that's seen Legion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on board. I've always said that if you give him between five to ten years, give let Ezra Miller take a, sh- a shot at it. But I feel like isn't that the dude that's playing the Flash now? Yes. Uh, eh. I I don't know. Lately, he's kind of like lost it, but like like we need to talk about Kevin Arrow. Like just looking at his face, his jawline, yeah. his his ability to play manic. I feel like he could do a good job. But I, get, I, I like not, the idea I'm not, I'm not into of it. I like the idea of a gender bent Joker. That'd be really cool. Um, all right, you're going first. So we talked about this for actually for the first time I think ever off off uh, mic about what our silver linings are to make sure we didn't step on each other's toes. Because uh, we've had a really bad habit this season of doing yes. that. Well, I think the movies we've been doing lately, they really only offer you so such a small yeah, window. Like, you know what? We're, you know, in season one, we really weren't good at finding silver linings. So let's do even more difficult films <laughs> this season. Um, I think, and this is, I'm going to go ahead and say this is a bronze lining. 
Uh, just to qualify it. Wait, is Bron- no, Browns is worse than Silver. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I think Tim Roth and Naomi Watts were kind of spared the grief of living without their son. Kind of in the fact that they died shortly I, after as well. Yeah, they were spared grief because they were murdered. I know. That's, I, I said it was. I said it was bronze, but it's kind of like I thought about this. It's a brown lining. I thought about this, but if my Talus isn't do that at all. If my son was murdered in front of me, I kind of wouldn't want to keep living, uh, especially if I was in a situation like Tim Roth is, where there's kind of virtually nothing I can do about it. Uh, I can't. Exact vengeance on these these guys because they're always a step ahead and always in control. And okay. my wife can't apparently do it since this movie won't let her. True. Um, so I think it's better to not live <laughs> after something like that happens to you just because it's so traumatizing. This is just my opinion. All right. So uh, kid dies, kill yourself. Copy that. If it if I'm in your shoes, that's probably what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. Um, um. Shit, that was dark. Yeah. I um, mean it's. It's a dark movie. It deserves a dark lining, I think. All right. Mine. Um, I'm not siding with the family. <laughs> yeah, see? You talk about mine being dark. You're going with the villains of the movie. I am. Um, th- Paul and Peter won the bet. Oh, God. And that's my silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> we really got to get better at this. Um I'm just saying they did. Is there a bet was made? Is there anything else? And technically they won. Well, actually, if we want to, I'll take yours a step further and go a little meta with it and say the audience won the bet because Peter poses that that question early on in the movie is who do you have your money on, us or them? And anyone who's smart would bet on the money on them. So, hey, way to go, us. All right, high fives all around. Up top. (laughs) Nice. Um,. Is there anything else we can Let's, think we're of? We're going to Vegas. <laughs> if there's anything else we can think of for a silver lining, because I feel like we really dropped the ball. This really split. dropped the ball on that um, one, guys. Is there anything else we can think of? Um, I'll give us like 10 seconds to to, to mull over it uh, before we move on. Uh, see, dog's dead, neighbor's uh, dead. Uh, all right, maybe when he hits rewind, the timeline splits, right? And we have we are, the, the days darkest of future timeline, past. <laughs> and we have what actually – and we have the – Peter got killed timeline. Maybe in an alternate reality, they would have still had to grieve for their dead child. Shit. Yep. Damn it. I thought I had How about this? Uh, even though it was immediately taken away from her, Naomi Watts did get to kill Peter. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. She has no who, recollection who, of who it. Who killed her son, so. True. Yeah. So she had revenge for, you know, Do you think they have seconds. no recollection? recollection? I would assume so, because it kind of plays out exactly as it did, except he beats her to the punch. I feel like... Paul does, but no one else. No, I don't even yeah. think I don't even think Peter does. No, Peter definitely doesn't. Um, so yeah, kind of to wrap things up. How do you think Paul discovered his magical powers? I think he always had them in this universe. Do you think Paul is human? Because we never see him not in control until that moment. And even then, he's not harmed. Like, do you think it's bigger than just he's just? A human. I mean, it has to be, right? I mean, the movie doesn't really, other than that world breaking device, I mean, with that, with you introducing that device, literally anything is possible and all the rules don't matter. So, it's like, except the, for the rules that Paul establishes. But even then, he she breaks them. I mean, he eventually corrects it, but mm-hmm. she still breaks them. Um, so, yeah, just to wrap things up, uh, honestly, I don't, I wouldn't recommend this movie. I don't necessarily, I think you could probably find a clip, like a, montage on youtube of the best moments of this <laughs> like the one and i think maybe the golf ball scene okay. are probably the best parts of the movie and you could probably find that on youtube like i said i was just mostly kind of bored by this movie okay uh i don't think the ultra violence was uh did really did much for me it's not like a clockwork orange where you know you're really right. driven by it um i wasn't really invested in the characters that much and uh i don't i'm just kind of over things being shocking for shock's sake see i would recommend it okay. because i like to see people's reactions to watching this movie because maybe always, in, maybe in a group viewing different. maybe in a group viewing it would be interesting especially for people who haven't seen it to see like the fourth wall breaks and the exactly. remote control scene like, maybe that like, i've showed this to movie to like a few different people and some of them didn't some of them had strong opinions like you did disliking it some were like 
I fucking hate you for making me watch this. I'm never talking to you again, Mally. And I was like, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. That's fair. Yeah. Um, some people loved it. You know, some people blah, 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 blah. So we recommend it in group viewings for new viewers. I don't, I don't think it warrants rewatchability. In yeah, fact, it's, I mean, I don't think any home invasion movie is rewatchable. Like, except for Knock Knock. <laughs> but, like, um, Strangers, we and you were both bored rewatching it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Your next, I don't consider a home invasion movie. No, I, I, I wouldn't. I didn't mean it. In, I guess that was a bad comparison. I didn't really mean it in a home invasion. Just the idea of uh, another movie we have to see that is not a home invasion movie either, but kind of is the, on that same level of your next, uh, the invitation that I've mentioned before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. got smarter characters in it. Okay. Kind of dealing in the same premise, but smarter characters. Okay. Um, does this make you want to see the original? Because I kind of turned me off from seeing it. Just because I know it's shot for shot, almost exactly the same, I've really never had an intro. I've, I'm curious to see, I was always curious to see how similar, but apparently it's stupidly similar, so I don't really feel yeah. the need to, to be honest. Um, I'll probably never watch this movie again. <laughs> again, I never wanted to until I suggested it, because I'm a dumbass. I have to say, though, maybe if I was a younger, if it was a younger me, and I had seen it, kind of like you said you did when yeah, you were younger, see, that's what I'm saying. I maybe was, I would have liked it. God, I was... 18 or 19 when I saw so this movie. So does it, does it hold up for you or you, you can see? No, I see what you're talking. Like, I like if I saw this for the first time now, I wouldn't be impressed or bothered by it, to it be would, honest. It, seems... it would just kind of be like, oh. Like, pre- I would probably react how you're reacting now. Yeah. But, like, since I saw this movie so long ago and, like, some of the what are now cliches weren't really cliches then, I guess, like, I think it had a different effect on me. It's weird, too, because Michael... Like, I, I'm just... I feel like I'm so, like... Not just me, but like just society in general was some more, much more desensitized. I mean, we were ten yeah. years ago. It's so weird too, because Michael Haneke had ten years since he had first done this movie to do this one, and he had movies in between there. And yet, somehow, this movie feels like a first-time director or like a first-time screenwriter. It feels rookie. I don't know why. Um, it just doesn't come together for me. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's talk pick me up movie alternatives. Well, mine mm-hmm. was going to be your next. I honestly thought you would recommend that, so I'm kind of glad I brought it brought up. We brought it up so much. Okay. I had a second one on deck. Okay. Um, again, very relatable theme wise. Mm-hmm. Um, the theme being golf. Happy Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that. I love Happy Gilmore. I uh, love. Like, anyone that says, <clears throat> anyone that hates Adam Sandler, if they haven't seen Happy Gilmore, I immediately write them off as morons. Because <laughs> they're wrong. Can I tell you my original? Because, dude, that was, like, that was Adam Sandler at his peak. Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison. God, Billy Madison. Waterboy. Waterboy is my favorite of that, that group. Billy Madison's a close second. I do love Happy Gilmore, Happy though. Gilmore's good. Um... Uh, my original <laughs> pick me up was gonna be funny people, but then I was like, "Well, that no, movie's that not." Movie's yeah. not I kind of wanted honestly, to honestly. Stick... We could almost do that movie on that. Could I thought be a about it episode. after I, after I remembered what the movie was? I was like, "Oh yeah, maybe I shouldn't put this because I don't think it's uh, it's a good ending." Um, I went. I just had you know what? I have it. I I like Tim Roth. I want to see him in other things. Uh, I want to see him in a movie. The Incredible Hulk. That's that's my pick. Wait, seriously? Yes, I, I I really wanted to see Tim Roth in just an absolute ridiculous fucking movie. Oh that- my god! <laughs> it actually is the Incredible Hulk. That movie doesn't He's hold a up. Badass in that movie, though. but it doesn't hold up. Um, I beg. T- okay, it's not a good movie. It has but moments, though, dude. It'll take you out from even remembering anything about Funny Games with how ridiculous it is. Um. So yeah, I, I like I said I like Tim Roth, but uh, not I was a, completely. I honestly thought you were gonna say like Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> that, yeah, that's not that's a potential episode for this show. Oh, true, but uh, wow, yeah, did not expect you to say. Wow, that's, that's hilarious. Amazing. Is that? It's almost no, no. That we did the village in between. I was gonna say that's two weeks in a row where mine. Pick me up, got stepped on. <laughs> but um, wait, when did I? Wait, when, when I recommended Scott Pilgrim, that was everyone else's recommendation. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. You son of a bitch. Um. Also, so, just rewatched that not too long ago. Amazing. Still, yeah, perfect God, movie. I love that movie. Well, uh, well, close. I have issues with the end. 
He should have ended up with knives. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is Funny Games from 2007. Uh, if you enjoy our show, please subscribe and leave us feedback on iTunes and a rating. Uh, you can go on Facebook and like us as well, facebook.com slash the Silver Linings playlist. We're on Twitter and Instagram as well. You can find us, uh, Silver Linings. We post uh, clues for upcoming episodes as well as uh, adding True each story. Adding True story. Each, uh, each movie we cover to our wall. That's a quick visual representation of everything we've covered. It's nice to see all those posters together. Uh, if you want to discuss this episode further with us and your peers, you can go to reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Find the official discussion thread for funny games. You can also leave that contest code we gave you for a chance to win some free stuff. Uh, you can also on that subreddit leave us a suggestion for how we can improve the show or maybe an episode we should cover. Uh, anything you want to do, any way you want to contact us, do it there. Uh, or by email at the silver linings playlist at gmail.com. Whatever you want to do. Uh, clue for next week, Mally, is uh, a film I suggested we do, so I got the clue for us. You ready? I guess. <clears throat> Focus on your life and not on your likes. It's a very social media centric episode okay. next week. Okay. Okay. So okay. tune in uh, next Monday for uh, for an interesting discussion. We'll have a we'll have a guest for that one who's. Pretty knowledgeable in that kind of thing. So, Mally, is there anything else you want to discuss? This is your last, maybe last time? I think you might be extending your stay. We'll see. I okay. have no idea when I'm leaving L.A. currently, <laughs> so might be here next week, might not. Okay. Um, if I am, going to be a very cramped room. Yes, yes. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, all right. So, thank you for listening, everyone. Uh, Mally, it was good doing this weird episode with you. Uh, yeah. So, until next week, as always... It's fucking hot outside. Oh, yes, it is.